Hello friends, this video on DNF block elements part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll talk about the solubility or stability of the higher oxidation state. I've already told that this transition metals, transition metals actually forms higher oxidation state with oxygen, with fluorine. Why oxygen and fluorine are electronegative, high electronegative and small in size. So you get higher oxidation state of transition metal when this transition metals are binded to fluorine or oxygen. For example, CrF6. So here chromium has plus 6 oxidation state. If you talk about the plus 6 oxidation of state of chromium, it happens with fluorine. Let's talk about the manganese plus 7 oxidation state. So this happens when you talk about MnO3F. So if you see here, this has plus 7 oxidation state. Okay. For vanadium plus 5 oxidation state occurs with VF5. Again with fluorine. Correct. Why? Because ability of fluorine to stabilize the highest oxidation state is because again as I told, higher bond enthalpy and higher lattice energy. The main reason is it has is very highly electronegative. It tries to suck electron toward itself. This delivers positive charge, and actually, you can get the higher oxidation state. And also, the fluorine size is small, so the lattice energy is very high, and the bond enthalpy is also very high. Okay. Also, note that the fluorides are actually unstable in their low oxidation state. For example, V F two. This is unstable, but VCl2 is stable. This one vanadium. Vanadium has plus 2 oxidation state also, but VF2 is unstable, but VCl2 is stable. Okay, so fluorides and oxides they need higher oxidation state for stability. Okay. If you see the copper example, copper 2 plus is more stable, but as I have seen you, copper solid. To become copper gas, you need atomization energy, then you need ionization energy to become plus one, and then you need further more ionization energy to become plus two. But still, this is more stable than this. Why? If you see here, copper two plus is more stable than copper one plus. Why? Because the delta hydration energy of copper two plus is much, much more than the hydration energy of copper one plus. And that's why this is more stable. Because all this energy which is required is actually compensated by hydration energy. So if hydration energy is more for copper 2 plus, that will become more stable overall. And if I had hydration of energy of copper 1 plus is not that much, overall then this will not be stable. Because overall it depends on delta hydration energy minus sum of all this energy. Delta H, ATM plus IEs. So if this is very high, overall it becomes higher. Okay, and please note out of oxygen and fluorine, oxygen has more ability to stabilize the highest oxidation state. For example, with Mn, if you see MnF4, at the max you get plus 4 oxidation state only with magnesium. But if you see Mn207, so in this case, magnesium has plus 7 oxidation state. So oxygen has more ability to form higher oxidation state. Okay. Why? Because oxygen has the ability to form multiple bonds with metal. Fluorine can form only one band, but oxygen can form multiple bonds with the metals. So higher oxidation state, oxygen and fluorine, oxygen is, has more tendency to form higher oxidation state than. So the question is how do you account for the increasing oxidizing power of the series VO2 plus Cr2O7 2 minus and MnO4 minus. Let's see the oxidation state of this VO2 plus oxidation state is plus 5 Cr2O7 2 minus this is 14 minus 2 12 by 2 plus 6 this is 4 2 8 8 minus 1 7 so these are the oxidation states of vanadium, chromium and magnesium these now for vanadium if you see plus 5 is the only oxidation state for stable oxidation state for chromium it is plus 6 and plus 3 so it can actually jump from plus 6 to plus 3 for magnesium magnesium is 7 and 2 so it can actually jump from 7 to 2 that will also be stable state so if it jump from 7 to 2 then 
the change in the oxidation state is plus 5. If we jump from 6 to 3, the change in oxidation state is plus 3. And for uh, VO2 plus, this is the most stable state. So even if it is, uh, jumps to, goes to plus 4, plus 3 or plus 2, that will be unstable. So this is already stable. So this will be the least, it will have least oxidizing power. Why? Because for this to have oxidizing power, these should reduce. Right? If it reduce, then only it can oxidize other. So if when it VO2 plus reduce, it will go to the unstable state. It won't want to reduce. If Cr2 O7 2 minus reduce, it will go to plus 3 oxidation state and the change in the oxidation state will be 3. If MnO4 minus reduce, it will go to the next stable oxidation state, it is plus 2, and the change in the oxidation number will be plus 5. So it has the maximum change in the oxidation number possible. So it will be the higher, highest oxidizing power. Let's do the reaction for MnO4 minus. For example, you take KMnO4, you react with sulfuric acid, you get MnCl2, and you get KCl, and you get water and you also get chlorine gas. Write the balanced reaction. This is the balanced reaction. Yeah. Now if you see, Mn had oxidation state of plus 7, Mn has oxidation state of plus 2. Right? Both are stable actually. So plus 7 to plus 2, 5 oxidation number change. So it is a great, greater oxidizing agent. Right? Same thing, let's see for chromium. K2Cr2O7 will actually react with again 14 HCl to give 2 KCl plus CrCl3 plus water and Cl2 gas. So if you see here, this is plus 3 oxidation state, this is plus 6 oxidation state, plus 6 to plus 3. The delta of oxidation number is 3. So it is little lesser oxidizing agent. We talk about vanadium, VO2 plus. It reacts with zinc, let's suppose you get VO2 plus plus zinc is oxidized. So if you see it, it changes from plus 5 to plus 4. Only one oxidation number change. Also, this is not much stable, this is more stable. So this will be a poor oxidizing agent. Correct. So if we have this chart where the list of oxidation states and the common oxidation state, we can actually infer a lot of information from this. Okay, this is dioxyvanadium. The next question is how do you account for irregular variation in ionization enthalpy for the first and second series of the transition? So how do we account for this irregular variations of the ionization enthalpy in the first and second series? Uh, in the first and second ionization enthalpy in the first series. So if you see here, we have told that ionization enthalpy is directly proportional to the effective nuclear charge. Right? So the effective nuclear charge actually decrease or increase, sorry, effective nuclear charge increase because of poor shielding effect of D, poor shielding effect. And also you are adding neutrons. So as you go left to right, you are adding neutrons and also because of poor shielding effect, the effective nuclear charge is increasing. But then gradually you see that effective nuclear uh, charge decrease because the shielding effect becomes more prominent. right? And thus, effective nuclear charge decrease and it is easy to pluck electrons and these values, the first ionization energy actually decrease. You see here. Okay, for zinc, the electronic configuration is pretty stable. Zinc, it is 3d10, 4s2, it is pretty stable, it won't want to lose electron and thus zinc has a very high value of first ionization energy. If we talk about the second ionization energy, let's see this chromium has very high value and copper has very high value. Let's see the electronic configuration of chromium, chromium plus 1, right? Because this I am talking about chromium plus 1 to chromium plus 2 and copper plus 1 to copper plus 2. So let's see the electronic configuration of chromium plus 1. Chromium plus 1 electronic configuration if you see is argon 3d 5 4s 2 and copper plus if you see the electronic configuration it is argon 3d 10 
4 as 0. So if you see this is fulfilled stable, this is half filled, this is stable. These are stable, these are stable so it won't want to lose electron and thus it has high ionization energy. So ionization energy actually depends on my effective nuclear charge and also the stability based on half filled and full filled electronic configuration. Okay. Cobalt, if you see, it has a lower value of ionization energy. So let's see the cobalt electronic configuration. Cobalt electronic configuration is 3D7. Four S two, but this is not giving any data. That means the cobalt also has this lesser value because of the better shielding effect by d orbital in the last uh, elements of a particular series. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests. Get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.